Proudly we hail. And now another Proudly We Hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Lee Tracy and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. What's your show today, Lee? I'm a detective, Ken, and this could be the story of a murder. Things get pretty complicated. The plot's an intriguing one that our audience will really enjoy. I'll be back to start work on the case after you give us a few words, Ken. Well, my few words are addressed to veterans of the United States Air Force. If you're a former serviceman with a spec number in radio, electronics, radar, or some other critical field, the Air Force needs you now. Get all the details from your nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station today. With our star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Inspector Jones, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of This Could Be Murder. <laughs> Last night I sat in my room on Telegraph Hill and stared through the window at the jutting shadows of the Golden Gate Bridge that stretched skyward. That are to the whole world a symbol of San Francisco. The hour was late and I was tired, utterly done in. I knew I couldn't sleep yet, but I couldn't drive from my mind the events of the evening or the strange sadness they had brought to me. To me, an allegedly emotionless inspector of police. About ten minutes after four that afternoon, a woman phoned headquarters. This is Cynthia McKay at 1063 Mason Street. My father's dead. He's been shot. Lots of murders happen, but it isn't often the man is rich and influential that Alan McKay gets killed. The commissioner himself assigned me to the case. He wanted all pressure brought to bear to clean it up as fast as possible. I brought a full crew with me, and we went to work methodically. Okay, boys. Fast for thorough job. Get lab analysis of everything. Well, what's the verdict, Doc? I'd say we shot about 4 o'clock. And look at this, Inspector. Dead center on the left temple. And the pistol was fired at close range, too. Mm -hmm. Hey, who was the funny little round man who let us in? Oh, that's one of your colleagues, Doc. Oh. Uh, Dr. Harvey Wilson, McKay's physician, close personal friend of the family. Have you seen the girl Cynthia yet? Mm, only for a couple of minutes. You know, Doc? No. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's only a kid, about 18. Not really pretty. Big eyes, black hair. Sounds fascinating. She is. Liked her very much. Oh, Oh, it doesn't sound like you, Jones. I'm a little worried about that girl, Doc. Shocked, you know. I'm going to see her now. I'm very sorry, Inspector Jones, but I'd rather you didn't disturb Cynthia just yet. I wanted to rest a bit more. Very well, Dr. Wilson. Uh, will you please show me where the housekeeper's room is? And her name, please. Marie Hedgeman. Come. This way. Dr. Wilson showed me the housekeeper's room and left. I knocked. I'm Inspector Jones. Oh? Come in. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Not right now, thanks. Tell me, Miss Hedgeman, where were you when Mr. McKay was shot? I left the house just before four and... Uh... Yeah, please go on. Well, I met Cynthia downstairs in the lobby. The same elevator boy brought her up. You still haven't told me where you went, Miss Hedgeman. Well, frankly, I just went for a short stroll in the park. I came back just before you arrived. Thank you, Miss Hedgeman. That's all for now. Oh, uh, by the way, Miss Hedgeman, were you fond of Mr. McKay? Uh, yes. I liked him very much. I went.
went downstairs and the elevator boy verified Marie Hedgeman's time of departure and the fact that it coincided with Cynthia's arrival. Upstairs, I again found Dr. Wilson in the sitting room that adjoined Cynthia's bedroom. Oh, it's you again. How's Cynthia? She's all right. I should think the shock would be extremely upsetting to a young girl. <laughs> the one with a reason, perhaps. <laughs> The doctor turned away and looked out a window. He was a curious, round little man with snow-white hair, and it was obvious that his cat-and-mouse conversation was leading to a point. Doctor, when did you come here today? As soon as I could after Cynthia called. I was in the operating room when she phoned. Doctor, you've been implying, and rather strongly, an odd attitude on the part of Cynthia. What have you been driving at? Frankly, that's no concern of yours, Inspector. The intimate peculiarities of a family are no concern of the police in a case of obvious suicide. Quite right, Doctor. But this doesn't look like suicide. I think it's murder. And that Cynthia killed her father. The doctor turned scarlet and he literally bounced with rage and waved his little arm. That's fantastic, utterly fantastic. But why? You practically said there was no love lost between McKay and his daughter. Now, let's get this straight, Inspector. Cynthia couldn't possibly have killed her father. Doctor, you're an old friend of the family, aren't you? Of course I am. Well, if you want Cynthia cleared of suspicion, I'll need your help. Uh, uh, Jones? Regardless of what evidence you have, I don't believe Cynthia could have killed her father. And I'll do anything you want to clear her. She has no idea she's under suspicion. I don't want her to know until we have this matter cleared up. Is that a bargain? For the time being, yes. Doctor, how long has Marie Hedgeman lived here? Oh, about 16 or 17 years. She came here shortly after Mrs. McKay died. Come in. You got a fingerprint report, Inspector. I excused myself, and Sanderson, my assistant, gave me some interesting but confusing facts. I returned to the doctor. What's the verdict, Inspector? I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, First, I want to point out that McKay was killed around 4 o'clock, just before Marie Hedgeman left the apartment. And just after that, Cynthia arrived. Cynthia has told us she found her father in his study and... She saw the pistol on the floor. <laughs> Stupidly, she picked it up. And naturally, her fingerprints are on the pistol. Yeah. So are Marie Hedgeman, Alan McKay, and several others. Whose pistol was it? Not sure yet. Cynthia says she never saw it before. Miss Hedgeman has told Sanderson that she saw it several days ago in McKay's desk and picked it up. She claims that's why her prints are on it. Ha! Where's your case? In a tailspin, I'm afraid. Uh, tell me more about this odd relationship between Cynthia and her father that you hinted at before. As you wish, Inspector. After Cynthia's mother died, McKay felt he'd been stuck with a troublesome obligation that interfered with his money-making career. He developed an actual dislike for the child. He gave her the material things of life, but... Little else. Oh, there's many a day she came to me, not complaining, mind you. But you could see that she was hurt and bewildered, aching all through for someone to care about her. Well, what about Marie Hedgeman? I should think she'd have been close to Cynthia. <laughs> she was so busy being in love with McKay that Cynthia was an annoyance to her, too. Was this a mutual love? <laughs> I sincerely doubt if he ever knew her attentions were love, even though she doted on him. Now, look, Inspector. I hope I've made myself clear about Cynthia. Another girl might have become so frustrated through lack of affection that she could kill her father in a fit of resentment. But not Cynthia. All her life, She's maintained an amazing perspective on life. I'm certain her calm manner was not a cover-up. She was always trying to find some way to touch her father's emotion. Inspector. Yes, Doctor? Who informed you of McKay's death? Cynthia. 
Ha! That's the end of your case against her. Fingerprints or not? <laughs> not necessarily. A murderer quite often informs the police of his act. Your own knowledge of psychology should prove that. Actually, I know that. That's only when the murderer feels quite safe from detection. Doctor, how is McKay's health? Excellent. The autopsy will show that. Inspector. Inspector. Yes, Miss Hedgeman. I don't like this whole thing, Inspector. I advise you to hold your tongue, Marie. This is my personal affair, Dr. Wilson. What don't you like, Miss Hedgeman? Well, same question. Looked upon with suspicion, my fingerprints taken, my... I've told the truth about the gun, but my nerves are screaming. I won't stand by and be persecuted, treated like a murderer. Now, please, please, Miss Hedgeman. I'll see that you're not disturbed again. Sanderson. Yes, Inspector. See that Miss Hedgeman is not disturbed again. Yes, sir. Thank you, Inspector. I shall be in my room. Hmm. Very unstable personality, Inspector. And frankly... I don't like her. You didn't like the murdered man, McKay, either, did you? Mm, yes and no. We went to college together until I entered medical school. I liked him after the fashion, except for his treatment of Cynthia. You knew Mrs. McKay? I met her in school. I took her out now and then. In fact, I uh, introduced her to McKay. She's a very fine woman. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Doctor, uh, wasn't uh, McKay quite a philanthropist? Well, he was rich, too rich, and he did make many bequests to medical foundations. You think Marie Hedgeman killed McKay, don't you? Who knows? It could be because of unrequited love. But somehow I doubt it. Suddenly the door clicked open, quietly. And there... Silhouetted in the archway was an ashen-faced vision in a dusky silver dressing gown. She put one delicate hand to her forehead and a shudder ran over her slim figure. Cynthia! Cynthia! Lee Tracy, starring as Inspector Jones in the proudly we hail production of This Could Be Murder... We'll return for the second act in just a moment. But first, I have a message to you young men and women of America. Do you know that the United States Air Force can help you plan and start a successful future? And at the same time, you can serve your country now when you're needed most. In the Air Force, you can make an exciting and useful career for yourself that you'll be proud of. And your family and friends will be proud of you, too. Yes, you'll find many opportunities for service to your country in the Air Force. Get full details at your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, we present the second act of This Could Be Murder. It was only the second time I set eyes on Cynthia McKay, but I could instantly sense a change in her. She looked sick and drawn. The doctor and I helped her to a comfortable chair. She rested for a few moments, saying nothing. Then, color returned to her cheek. I'm so sorry, but I couldn't stand being alone anymore. And, Doctor, if you think it's all right, I, I do want to talk to the inspector. You're very sure, my dear, that you feel up to it? Oh, yes, I'm all right now. Doctor, I think it best if Cynthia and I talk alone. I want to be sure. It's all right, Dr. Wilson. As you say, my dear, I want to get you a sedative anyhow, and I'll return shortly. <laughs> I was oddly attracted to this girl. Her great eyes and strange black hair shot with gray had an almost hypnotic effect on me. It seemed entirely wrong to put matter-of-fact questions to her, but there was no choice. You want to ask me some questions, don't you, Inspector? A few. Well, go on, Inspector. Cynthia, were you on good terms with your father? Of course. Why do you ask that? Cynthia, it's entirely possible that your father was murdered. Oh, Inspector, he was murdered, wasn't he? Is there any doubt? Might have been suicide. Oh, I can't believe that, Inspector. Really, I can't. Why not? 
My father was a very strange man. I knew that he made many enemies in business and few friends in society. In a way, we were almost strangers. But his life satisfied him, not everyone else. He lived almost entirely for his business. He was a great planner, too. He always thought of the future and the promise it held. He was recently planning to extend his activity to the East Coast. One of his greatest joys was to look ahead to the new things to conquer. Yet despite his peculiarities, my father loved life and its challenge. I know he wanted to live. And that's why I know he was murdered. As Cynthia finished speaking, I offered her a cigarette. She refused, told me to smoke. As I dropped the match into a silver ashtray, I noticed a small, unframed photo lying on the mantel. I picked it up. That's a passport photo, Inspector. You're planning to go abroad? Yes, I'm sailing for Paris next week. I'm going to study for a year under Molyneux, dress designer. Are you still planning to go? Yes, Inspector. Why not? I stared at her in silence. This was a strange girl indeed. I was about to put another question to her. A shot rang out. I told Cynthia to stay where she was, and in two seconds I was in the hallway, and Sanderson and Doc Thomas, the coroner, came running to meet me. Came from in there, Inspector. We flung open a door. There, lying on the bed, was Marie Hedgeman, a pistol by her side and a wound in her left shoulder. It was a bad wound. But Doc Thomas said she'd live. When Sanderson and I had given him all the help we could, we left. You think that suicide attempt was the murderer's confession, Inspector? Or perhaps an act born of unbearable despondency. But it certainly proved Dr. Wilson was right when he said she was an unstable personality. Well, we've just finished in the old man's study. Good. Follow up on this latest mess. I've got to get back to Cynthia. We don't want any more tragedies around here. I returned to Cynthia. She was sitting exactly as I'd left her, staring at the floor. That was Maria, wasn't it? How do you know? I could tell the shot came from her room. Is she... No, no, she'll be all right. A serious wound, but not fatal. She shot herself, of course. Do you say it that way because you think she killed your father? Yes, I do. It was she who advised my father to send me away to school, to camps, anywhere to get rid of me, just so she could be with him. <laughs> but my father never gave her a second thought. That was... Why do you think she killed your father? Because he wouldn't pay any attention to her. And for money, too. So she could go someplace else and find what she hadn't found here. Hello? Yes, it's for you, Inspector. Thank you. Inspector Jones. This is Brian, Inspector. We found out the pistol was bought in a small shop on Market Street. When? Eight days ago in the afternoon. The man was rather tall and wore gold-rimmed glasses. His name was Alan McKay. That's enough, Bryant. See you later. Right, Inspector. Uh, Cynthia, to whom will your father's estate go? Most of it to medical institutions, to his own college. And some of it goes to me, of course, and some to Marie. There are many other bequests, too. We can get the will from the safe if you'd like to see it. Do you have the combination? Yes, it's written in the corner of my father's appointment book. He put it there for my benefit because I was always forgetting it, and since I kept certain small pieces of jewelry there... Well, wasn't that an obvious place to leave a combination? I suppose so, but nothing of any real value was kept in the safe. We walked slowly from the room and down a long, softly lit corridor. We reached the door of her father's study where he'd been found dead. Suddenly, Cynthia flinched and then leaned against the wall, her face contorted. I can't. I can't. Now, now, steady, Cynthia, steady. I'll take you back to your room. I'll find the combination myself. No, I... there's no reason for me to be frightened. Go on, Inspector. I'll come with you. I opened the door slowly. We stepped across the threshold, and I snapped on the light. The room had been restored to order. Cynthia, a small mouth set, pointed to her father's desk. We walked to it. Inspector, do you mind? Uh, in that drawer. Not at all. That's it, the leather-bound book. I took the book out of the drawer and rifled through it. It had all of McKay's appointments listed up to today. 
the day he was murdered. I handed it to Cynthia. By the way, Cynthia, had your father been acting upset lately? I don't think so. Why? We just wondered if he'd bought the pistol himself. She said nothing, just looked at me, then opened the appointment book. She found the page she wanted, returned the book to me, and as she fiddled with the safe, I glanced through the book. I saw an appointment McKay had recorded three weeks before, and then Cynthia crossed to me and handed me the will. I put the book down, turned the pages of the legal document. What does the will prove? For one thing, that Miss Hedgeman did not kill your father for money. But he left her considerable. By ordinary standards, yes, but I don't think $1,000 cash and $100 a month for life would be sufficient reason to kill the man she'd been in love with. You're probably right, Inspector. After all, she did try to take her own life. Don't say another word, Cynthia. Dr. Wilson. So, Inspector, you've been giving Cynthia the third degree, eh? Oh, well, not exactly. She's in no condition to... Please, Doctor, I have no desire to quarrel with you. I'm sure you'll be glad to hear I've learned several things since talking to Cynthia, all of which may help her. Well, in that case... Frankly, I'm glad you returned so soon. I feel you can add to or clarify several things Cynthia's told me. Whatever you want to know, Inspector. Doctor, you're extremely fond of Cynthia, aren't you? She's like a daughter to me. Uh, Cynthia, uh, did did you love your father? Oh, of course. Doctor, Doctor, when did you last see Mr. McKay? Oh, I think it was a week ago Wednesday. Inspector Jones, must we continue with this now? I'm sorry, but we have to. Doctor, did you talk to Mr. McKay on the phone this morning? What are you getting at, Jones? Yes, if it's any of your business, I did talk to him this morning. Thank you. Now, uh, isn't it true, Doctor, that since Cynthia's childhood, you continually insinuated to her that she was badly treated by both her father and Marie Hedgeman? <laughs> Perhaps I haven't always been kind in my remarks about them, but I think their treatment of Cynthia deserved no more. Frankly, I think you highly exaggerated the situation. That's a vicious statement. How dare you make it? I'll tell you why, Doctor. You half implied before that you'd been in love with Cynthia's mother. And it's obvious that you've been envious of McKay's success and his money. Now, Jones, Hear me I... out. Personally... I believe you've lived in a jealous rage ever since McKay married the girl you loved. When she died, there's no doubt you tried to gain the affection of her daughter and turn her against her father. You never quite succeeded, did you, Doctor? Let's just suppose all this psychological deduction of yours is right, Jones. Just what does it add up to? It adds up to the fact that you killed Alan McKay. Doctor backed away, and Cynthia gasped. That's an absolute lie. I was operating on a patient at four this afternoon when McKay was killed. I can prove it. Doctor, in McKay's will, as a bequest of one hundred thousand dollars for medical research to the university you both attended, and there are several other gifts of large sums to other organizations for medical research. What does this indicate to you? Nothing. Nothing at all. Actually, Doctor, it means that. Alan McKay had a phobia about disease and dreaded it. You knew this. You also knew that Cynthia was going abroad for a year. You might lose her and the money she'd eventually get. So, eight days ago, when you examined McKay, you told him you thought he had an incurable disease. That's why McKay bought the pistol. The same day, right after he saw you. The days, the time... Everything checked. But, Inspector, if this terrible thing is true, why didn't... Did... did your father wait? Yes. Because your father was not sure until this morning. In his appointment book, under today's date, there's a note to phone Dr. Wilson for reports at 10 a.m. There's no doubt in my mind that when your father phoned, Dr. Wilson told him the diagnosis of an incurable disease was confirmed. And your father, who, as you said, lived for the future, could find nothing further to live for. Dr. Wilson, just as surely as if you'd pulled the trigger yourself, you killed Alan McKay. Well, 
The little round doctor looked at Cynthia. She turned from him and sobbed softly. <laughs> the doctor was crushed. His face ashen. He walked across the soft carpet towards the door. And then he disappeared down the hallway. Oh, Inspector. I pity him so much. So do I, Cynthia. Because no criminal behind bars will suffer as much for his crime as Dr. Wilson will. Very intriguing story indeed, Lee, and congratulations on your excellent portrayal of Inspector Jones. Thank you, Ken. I'd like to take a moment to tell all the young men and women listening about one of the most important jobs in American history, that of helping to make and keep the peace of the world. It's a whopping big assignment, but you can help, and you can help right now by enlisting in the Air Force, and you'll be helping yourself, too. For when you join the U.S. Air Force, you'll be joining one of the finest organizations in the world. You'll have opportunities to really get ahead, because the Air Force offers you training and specialties where you can make real progress. There are more than 400 jobs in radio, radar, weather, aircraft maintenance, and many others. So don't delay. Serve your country and yourself in the Air Force. Get all the details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. Proudly We Hail stars Lee Tracy. Supporting Mr. Tracy in the cast were Helen Christian, Joe DeSantis, Miriam Wolf, Jack Jason, and Bill Lipton. This Could Be Murder was written by Arnold Leo. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarneri. Proudly We Hail is directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. We hope you'll be with us next week for another Proudly We Hail presentation. We have a program entitled Variations on Melvin Brown, and it's an intriguing mystery drama with a surprise plot. Goodbye.